Dear students, today we are going to discuss Heba and its essentials. Heba, which is also known as gift, is a very important topic under Muslim law. Gift in any law is a transfer of property in which ownership is transferred by a living person to another living person without consideration. We have one act which is known as the Transfer of Property Act. In this act we have a chapter 7 which lays down provisions regarding gift by any person in India, irrespective of religion, caste or creed, but it is not applicable to Muslim gifts, which are also known as Hiba. Because the formalities of Hiba are different from those of a gift made by any non-Muslim. In this chapter, there is one section, section 129, which says that nothing in this chapter shall be deemed to affect any rule of Muhammadan law. Which means that the provisions regarding gift under Transfer of Property Act do not affect the provisions of Hiba under Muslim law. There is one act which I have talked about while teaching you sources of Muslim law and that act is known as Shariat Act or Shariat Application Act 1937. This act also includes gift as one of the matters in which the rule of decision should be Muslim personal law if the parties are Muslims. So these two provisions, one given under Transfer of Property Act and the one which I just talked about under Sharia Application Act 1937, make it absolutely clear that whenever a gift is a Muslim gift or Heba, the provisions of Transfer of Property Act will not apply and the provisions of Muslim personal law shall apply. However, there are other transfers, the transfers inter vivos, meaning thereby transfer between living persons by Muslims or anybody else, such as sale, exchange, mortgage or lease. With regard to these transfers, the tra provisions given under Transfer of Property Act will apply even if the parties are Muslims. So only with regard to Heba, the provisions of Muslim law shall apply and not those provisions which have been laid down under Transfer of Property Act. Now, what is the meaning of Heba? This becomes very clear by these two definitions which I have given in this slide. Hedaya defines Hiba in these words. It says that Hiba is an unconditional transfer of ownership in an existing property made immediately and without any consideration. Similarly, Mullah Saddin Shah Faridun Ji Mullah he also defines Hiba in his book on Muslim law and he says that a Hiba or gift is a transfer of property made immediately and without any exchange by one person to another and accepted by or on behalf of the letter. If you analyze, you will find that these two definitions are very similar to each other. 
And on the basis of these definitions, you can draw the following characteristics of Muslim gift, which is known as Hiba. What are these characteristics? There are four characteristics of Hiba. Number one, it is a transfer inter vivus, meaning thereby it is a transfer by a living person to a living person. Number two, it is an unconditional transfer of property. Unconditional. There is no condition attached to it. So the transfer is unconditional. Number three, it is an immediate transfer and of a property in existence. That means it is not a future transfer. It is an immediate transfer. And transfer of which property? Transfer of a property which is in existence. That means that under gift, one cannot transfer a future property. A property that is that has come into existence, that is transferred under Hiba. And the fourth characteristic is, it is without any consideration. And it is very well known. Any gift is gift when it is without any consideration, when it is not made in exchange of something. So in any gift, there is no exchange. There is no consideration. There is, there is no quid pro quo. And that is why it is gift. Now, if you want to know what are the essentials of a valid gift, meaning thereby, what are the formalities of a valid gift? What should be done in order to make a valid heba? There are three essential requirements. Number one is the declaration. Declaration by whom? Declaration by the donor. Declaration by the person who is making gift. Number two, acceptance. Acceptance by whom? Acceptance by donee. That means acceptance by the person in favor of whom the gift or heba is made. Or if he, if he or she is not accepting or not in a position to accept because of some reason, somebody else accepts on behalf of the donee. And the third, very essential, very important essential condition is that there, there should be delivery of possession also. Delivery of possession of the property. That means the property should be delivered by the donor to the donor. Now let us try to analyze one by one. What does the first requirement that is declaration mean? Declaration is a, a statement which signifies the intention of the transferer that he is intending to make a gift. So declaration is in the form of a statement. It may be oral or it may be written. But it is a statement where the intention of the donor becomes very obvious. But this statement is a voluntary statement. A declaration must be made in clear words. Clear words. A declaration made in ambiguous words is void. Ambiguous means which is doubtful, not clear. So if any declaration is made using those words which are not clear in their meaning, which create doubt, then in that situation the declaration cannot be said to be a clear declaration. It may be an ambiguous declaration. And if the declaration is ambiguous, this declaration is meaningless has no effect, has no value. According to Magnaton, a gift cannot be Im implied. It cannot be implied. It must be express and unequivocal. It must be express and unequivocal. It may be either written or, or oral, but it must be express. It can't be implied. 
one cannot draw the conclusion of declaration by the conduct of the donor no the donor must have expressed his intention and it must be unequivocal also meaning thereby it must be very clear it must not create any kind of doubt declaration may be oral or written this is true under muslim law a declaration may be oral or written it may be both either oral or written the provision of section 123 transfer of property act which provides that a gift of immovable property must be in writing and registered does not apply in case of muslim gift in case of hima so even if the property is immovable property oral gift under muslim law is valid there is one judgment of 1994 delivered by honorable supreme court of india in the case of ilahi samsuddin versus jaitun b maqbool the supreme court held that under muslim law declaration as well as acceptance of gift may be oral may be oral mind minded whatever may be the nature of the property gifted so the nature of the property is immaterial whether the property is movable or immovable the gift may be oral if it is in writing the hiba nama that means the document need not be on stamp paper and also need not be attested or registered these are the words of the honorable supreme court of india therefore under muslim law hiba or gift may be oral also although i know that in case of oral gift there are so many practical difficulties whenever any dispute arises because the person who is claiming the gift to be a oral gift he finds it it's very difficult to prove in the court of law because the he must he must convince the court that there was really a gift which was oral gift and oral gift uh, is certainly difficult to prove however the consent should be free it goes without saying whenever a declaration is made as i told you earlier the declaration needs to be voluntary that means there should be free consent and if the consent is not free the gift is not valid it is invalid the other thing is that the consent or declaration must be bona fide that means it must have been made with good intention in good faith it should have been made it should not have been made to deceive someone it should not have been made to defraud somebody defraud the creditors for example if it is done if the circumstances are such which create such a doubt that then that situation the gift is voidable at the option of the creditors but who can make a gift who can be a donor the answer is the donor must be competent but how the competency of the donor is determined when can one say that the donor is competent there are two aspects of the competency of donor number 1 the donor must have the capacity number 2 in addition to having the capacity the donor must have the right also but what does it mean capacity means that he must be an adult he must not be a minor he or she must be an adult donor must not be a minor because if a minor is making a gift minor's gift is void the other condition is that the donor must be of sound mind if he or she is of unsound mind again the gift cannot be a valid one it is void the third is he or she must be a muslim at the time of making gift mind you 
at the time of making gift. That person, donor, must be a Muslim. Only then Muslim law will apply. If he is not a Muslim, then the provisions of Muslim law relating to gift will not apply. Then the provisions of Transfer of Property Act will apply if he is not a Muslim. So for donor, it is necessary that he or she must be a Muslim if that gift is to be treated as hiba and if the provisions of Muslim law need to apply, then the donor must be a Muslim. These are three aspects of capacity. Now, what is the meaning of right? Why it is said that he must have the right also? In addition to having capacity, the donor must have the right also. Because right means that the donor must be the owner of the property. No one can make a gift of somebody else's property. One can make gift of one's own property. If the donor is the owner of the property, then only he or she has the right to make a gift. It's a, it's a, it is something which every intelligent person, a person of ordinary prudence understands. That I, for example, if, want, if I want to make a gift in favor of somebody, I can do so only when, if I own the property. If I don't own the property, it is not possible for me because I don't have the right to make the gift. So nothing less than the absolute interest is transferred in gift. This one aspect should also be remembered. The second essential requirement of a valid gift under Muslim law is acceptance. Who will accept? The person in whose favor the gift is made. And mind you, gift is a bilateral transaction. There are two parties. That is why it is a bilateral transaction. One is the donor, the other is doni. Therefore, it must be accepted by the doni. Without acceptance, gift is not complete. If the doni is not accepting, the donor wants to give that property to, to, to doni, but doni doesn't want to accept because of any reason. If he is not accepting, the gift is not complete. But who can be the doni? This point must be understood clearly. The doni may be any person in existence. Doni may be any person, but he or she must be in existence, irrespective of his age, gender or sex, religion or his state of mind. That means age is immaterial. Gender or sex is immaterial. immaterial. His or her religion is also immaterial. His state of mind is also immaterial. That means, again, he may be minor or major. He, be, he or she may be a male or female. He may be a Muslim and he may be a non-Muslim also. Therefore, a gift in favor of a non-Muslim is equally valid. And that is why I told you that only the dean, donor needs to be a Muslim. Doni need not to be a Muslim. If the Doni is non-Muslim, even then the gift is valid and the provisions of Muslim law will apply if the donor is Muslim. A state of mind is also immaterial. That means the Doni may be of sound mind as well as of unsound mind. So it doesn't matter. If the Doni is sane, then also the gift is valid. Muslim gift is valid. If the doni is of unsound mind, insane, even then the gift is valid. Now there are some specific examples of doni, which, has, which are not only specific, but very curious examples also. One example, a child in the womb of its mother. Child is not born. The child is in the womb of its mother. What will happen? Can a gift be made in favor of such a child which is in the womb of its mother? The answer is yes, such a, such a gift can be made. But 
there are conditions when it is valid provided it the child is born alive within 6 months from the date on which the gift was made this is an essential requirement child must be in the womb of the mother and the child must must be born within 6 months alive from the date of the gift if these two conditions are fulfilled gift or hiba in favor of unborn child or child in the womb of mother is valid perfectly valid now suppose the person is not a natural person who is a natural person any human myself i am a natural person any human being is a natural person but suppose the person is not a natural person that person is a juristic person there are other there are many persons who are juristic persons they are artificial persons law confers personality on them can a gift may be made in favor of them hmm? are they competent donors the answer is yes for example it can be made it can be done in favor of a corporation or a company a university a school or a mosque these are the examples of juristic persons a juristic person may also be a donor and therefore a gift in favor of such a person may also be validly made what about minor and insane the answer is yes gift or hiba in favor of a minor or insane can also be made it is valid as they are in existence but who accepts on behalf of the minor or the insane person the guardian of that person will accept then the the requirement of acceptance will be fulfilled so minor's acceptance is no acceptance but acceptance by an insane person is no acceptance therefore somebody who is a guardian of that minor or insane will accept on behalf of such a minor or guardian what about gift in favor of two or more persons suppose there are two or more persons can a gift be made in favor of those persons what is the answer the answer is yes it can be made but there are two conditions number 1 persons must be ascertainable all those persons in favor of whom the gift is being made they must be ascertainable what does it mean ascertainable means every one of them must must be identified must be known the identity of all of them must be very clear number 2 it must be accepted by all of them the acceptance should also be made but by whom by all of them if these two conditions are fulfilled then such a gift can be made now the third requirement delivery of possession delivery of possession the possession is to be delivered if the del- if, if the possession is not delivered suppose a gift is made declaration has been made the other person donee has accepted also but there is no delivery of possession the property has not been delivered to the donee will the gift be valid the answer is no delivery of possession is an essential requirement of muslim gift but delivery of possession is of two kinds number 1 actual delivery of possession number 2 constructive delivery of possession what is the difference let us try to understand actual delivery of possession happens in relation to those property which have physical existence suppose i have a car and i want to make a hiba of that car in favor of my younger brother that car has a physical existence i make a declaration my brother accepts it now i have to deliver the possession how will i do it 
I, I will have to hand over that car. I will have to give the possession of that car to my brother. Then the third condition is fulfilled. So this is known as actual delivery of possession. But there are circumstances where because of the nature of the property or because of some conditions attached with the property, the delivery of possession is not possible. What will happen then in such a situation when actual delivery of possession is not possible, symbolic transfer of property where the property of is of such a nature that its physical possession is not possible and it cannot be delivered, actually then symbolic transfer is done. And this is symbol, this symbolic transfer is known as constructive delivery of possession. This at least symbolic transfer of property is necessary where actual delivery of possession is not possible. When it happens, when it is required, a constructive delivery of possession is sufficient A, where the property is intangible. When a property is intangible, intangible properties are those properties which cannot be which cannot be sensed which cannot be which cannot be you know uh, uh, felt by your senses there are many properties which are intangible that there are many properties which do not have any physical existence i give you one example goodwill of any firm is an example of intangible property. It doesn't have any physical shape. Copyright is an intellectual property. It doesn't have any physical shape. Patent is the example of intangible property. It doesn't have any physical shape. Such properties are known as intangible properties. If the property is intangible, when it doesn't have any physical physical existence, you cannot deliver it. The other situation is where the property is tangible. That means it has physical existence, but the situation is not permitting for the actual delivery of possession. It, the property is in such a situation where the delivery of possession is not possible. Now, these two cases make it very clear. In Sajjad Ahmad Khan versus Kadri Begum, a very old case of 1895, in, in the old, old days, there was, there was a system which was known as Zamidari system. There were Zamidars who, who were uh, landlords and they had huge, you know, uh, piece of portion of land uh, under their ownership and which was known as Zamidari. Many uh, Zamidars had, you know, uh, vast areas of Zamidari. Now, suppose somebody wanted, a Zamidar wanted to make heba of a portion of his Zamidari. Then how would, how the uh, property could be delivered? The delivery of possession was not possible. So in those days, under those circumstances, what the donor used to do was that he used to change the name in the revenue records. And this is known as mutation of names. In place of his name, the name of the donee was mentioned. And that is all that, that could be done under the circumstances. The court said that if it, this was done, if mutation of norm and names or change of names in the revenue record was done, the court used to say that in this case, the court clearly said that delivery of possession was legally presumed. This was enough. This was enough for fulfilling the requirement of delivery of possession if uh, mutation of name was done. And therefore, it was a constructive delivery of possession. There is another case, Ibrahim Shah Muhammad versus Noor, Ahmad Noor Muhammad, of 1984, comparatively a recent case. In this case, what happened that in a house, some tenants 
were living. The owner of the house, the donor, wanted to make a gift of that house to the donee. He went to the uh, tenant and said that, look here, this house which till now belonged to me, I was the owner. Now I have I have gifted this house to somebody else. And now this person whom I have transferred this property through gift is your new landlord. And now you will pay all the rents to him in his name. And together with this statement, he handed over the title papers also to the donee. The court said, this is enough. And this will be presumed as delivery of possession has been done. The court said that the, uh, the other thing which could be done under the circumstances was that he could have asked the tenants to come out of the house with all his belongings. And now he could have said that, Doni, you enter the house, take the possession of the house. Now the Doni would come out and then the tenant will again enter the house with all his belongings. The court said, this drama is not required. This is enough that the landlord went. He told the tenant that now I am no longer your landlord. Mr. X, who is the Doni, is your la landlord. Now onwards, from now onwards, you will pay all the rents to him and he will accept the rent on uh, as, as, as uh, the new owner of that house. He did all those things which, which were possible and therefore in the opinion of the court, this was enough. Though, so these are the examples of constructive delivery of position. There are certain situations when delivery of position and gift is not necessary. These are four examples. And if you read these examples, you will agree that there is no need. Actually, the situation is such where delivery of possession is not required because it, it doesn't make any sense. Number one, when the donor and donee live in the same house, which has been gifted, what is the use of delivery of possession when the donee is already in that house? Number two, when gift is made by husband to wife, again, no delivery of possession required. Third, when gift is made by guardian in favor of ward, again, similar situation. No delivery of possession required. And the last one is when gift of property is already in possession of the donee. Donee is already in possession of the, of the property. If, if donee already enjoys the possession, what is to be delivered? Nothing. Which he already has. Which he already has cannot be given again. Therefore, Delivery of possession is not required. And this last point, which I want to tell you, a very significant point is that under Muslim law, registration of Heba is neither necessary nor sufficient. Is neither necessary. It is not necessary. And it is not sufficient also. You read the whole thing which I have written in this slide and it will be absolutely clear to you why it is said that registration is neither necessary nor sufficient. It is not necessary means even without registration, gift under Muslim law can be made if the formalities of Muslim law with regard to Hiba are fulfilled. That means declaration, acceptance and delivery of possession. If these three things have been done and registration has not, has not been done, Hiba is valid. Registration is not done, even then Hiba is valid. Now it is not sufficient also. What does it mean? It means that if the formalities provided under Muslim law are not fulfilled, only registration is done. Suppose there was no declaration, no acceptance, no delivery of possession, but only registration was done. Will it amount to heba under Muslim law? The answer is no. No, it is not sufficient. 
only with the help of registration, Hiba cannot be made. What is then required? Again, declaration, acceptance and delivery of position. If these two things are done, then registration, whether registration is done or not done, it is immaterial. Registration is neither necessary nor sufficient for the validity of Hiba under Muslim law. Hope you have understood. Please go through my slides again and again and listen to whatever I have said. You will be able to comprehend. I hope the things are clear. Thank you. Thank you very much.